Looks like we're live and ready to go. I'm gonna let a few of our friends, our community join us. This is our Sunday night energy healing lives. We've been, do we've been doing these for, I don't know, I wanna say a little bit under a year. And this community has been growing and we've been tapping in into our intuition, our gifts. We've been learning a ton. We've been giving readings and intuition to one another. We've been receiving it. And hey, Amanda, good to see you, girl. Um, it Last weekend was my birthday. And <laughs> if you didn't see, if you weren't, hi, braids. Oh, you like my braids? It's because I put coconut oil in my hair and it was just really gross looking, but... Um, last weekend was my birthday and Emma demonstrated an intuitive body reading, an intuitive process for, for me for my birthday and uh, it was so good. <laughs> um, <laughs> someone said, just said, I don't know what I requested, but let's invite, invite Emma again. Well, she's on, she's here, she's ready to rock and roll. But what, a little bit of teaching I wanna to do today. Hey Grace, what transpired after last week? I had a lot of questions come in from the replay and from those of you who were live with us just asking like, well, you know, cause I had a lot come up that I had been maybe sensing, but, but not really, but blocking. And so how do we know when intuition is speaking to us? How do we know when it's our trauma? Or how do we know when it's the spirit versus fear how do we know when it's God versus devil? How do we know when it's intuition versus ego? I'm going to help you dissect that process today. And this last week, just reflecting on the reading that Emma gave me, it was so clear that my body and my higher self had been giving me these little nudges and clues. And because of my attachment, because of trauma in my body, because of energy that I was still harboring, it was getting deflected, deflected, deflected. So we all do this, right? It's it's the part of the human experience, part of the energy clearing process. But I sat with this for over this week and what came through, I have a little graph that um, I think we'll post on Instagram this week so you guys can see it in tangible form. But when I was just sitting with this this weekend and like what, what wants to come through me for our live tonight, this was it. So trauma versus intuition. How do we know when it's intuition speaking to us? And how does the trauma within our body and our ego, how does that all play into when we're receiving a message? Okay, so it starts with when God, the universe, source, the creator speaks to us. This, this message goes through a little trickle down series. So God speaks through usually our guides, our angels, Jesus, our loved ones, anyone in spirit form on the other side. Those guides then speak to our higher self or or our soul. When we feel like, oh, so that just that song spoke to my soul. Something about those lyrics just spoke to me. That is God through our guides to our higher self or our soul speaking to us, okay? And from our higher self or our soul, intuition is a tool that is that our guides use to speak to us to get to our body, right? So guides, higher self or our soul using intuition to get to our body. When that energy that's just filtering down this divine stream reaches our body, we usually get a body cue or a body knowing. And once that body knowing happens, we get a message or we get that knowing of like, I don't know, just my gut feeling, or we feel like a little download or a ping. What I'm saying to you now is something that I received when I was meditating in the yard this weekend. So it goes, God speaks usually through our guides to our higher self or our soul to using intuition as a tool that goes to our body, that gives our body a cue that results in a knowing, a gut feeling or a message in ourselves. Does that make sense? You'll have to tap the hearts or let me know in the comments. Yes. And I'll go over this. I see that you're getting a notebook. That's awesome. I'll go over it once again at the end. So, <coughs> excuse me. So where do where now where does ego and where does trauma come into play? So we have guides. So God to guides to higher self or our soul to our intuition to our body to the message. Ego, the devil, whatever makes sense to you swoops in at the level of our higher self or our soul to intercept and, and to have us doubt. Have you ever had like this beautiful, holy, divine in, inspirational thought of like, oh my gosh, followed by a da 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 like a negative voice, your inner critic. 
that's the ego. So you're seeing that dichotomy of spirit versus ego. So if you're having like this beautiful inspiration, so for example, when I was writing this out, all this came in so beautifully. I wrote it all down, I felt so clear. And then going over it just a couple of minutes after that and later today, my ego comes in. They're not gonna understand that. That's not gonna make sense. You didn't do a good enough job. Ego is always there to protect us. And we can lovingly say, thank you, ego. Thank you for coming in, for wanting to keep me safe from people not understanding my message, but I'm good and I'm gonna share this, okay? So that's where ego, devil, fear, whatever you wanna call it, will come in at the level of higher self, of soul, and kind of just like send like a spear through that message. And when you watch for it and when you know it's this, it doesn't have to affect you. You can say, okay, there's my inner critic, there's my ego, there's fear speaking, and I don't have to listen to that. And then your message can stay intact, okay? And then where does trauma in our body have to play in? So when we are, again, God to guides, to higher self or our soul, to use his intuition as a tool to speak to our body results in the message or the knowing. At the body level, trauma can come up. So trauma can be something old energy in the body, fear coming up, things that aren't processed, and it can kind of like jolt that message coming up in the body, right? So you're feeling... You're having this beautiful stream of consciousness come in, inspiring you to go after something, to feel safe. And then you're like, but I don't feel safe in my body. And the more energy healing and the more intuitive work you do, the more you'll be able to to differentiate between trauma coming up in your body and when it's actually something to listen to, when it's the spirit, when it's God trickling down through that that divine lineage of, of a message to you, it'll it will never feel scary and fear filled, but it will feel important. It'll be like you need to do this, but it won't make you fear for your life, your safety, your breath, etc. So you can kind of notice that where where trauma, old energy will come in and intercept that message at the level of the body and then you'll start to doubt yourself or you'll start to doubt your body signals or you'll be like oh I don't know my body's doing this so this must not be safe it takes some time it takes some practice but clearing out your trauma will make you the most abundant and clear channel for yourself and for others a really really good example to know when it's intuition versus when it's trauma speaking we all have that friend that gives amazing advice Like she or he's the first one we call when something's going on with us. The wisdom, the clarity, you just feel like when you feel like they're getting a message from God and they're speaking it to you, but their own life is in utter chaos. You're like, wow, they give such good advice, but I don't know if they take any of their own advice or what they're doing with their own life, but their advice is solid, sound, and divine inspired. That's an example of a strong channel blocked by old energy, old trauma in their own body. So they are this open, beautiful channel giving advice to you, but because they haven't yet fully cleared out the things holding them back, it gets in the way of their own messages in their own life. You have to let me know if that makes sense. Okay, so how to clear, how to heal, how to allow for this process to happen. So when we think, after hearing this, you're like, okay, cool. I want to be like a super clear channel and I, I want to boost my intuition and do all this. So, okay. How do I just, I just tell me how to get this stuff out. Like, let's do it. Notice that switch right there. That is the mechanism that's going to put you in fight or flight when we want to be in rest or digest. That's going to put you into sympathetic nervous system when we want to be in parasympathetic. No great energy, subconscious, somatic, limbic system, healing has taken place when you were in a fight or flight state or a really active brainwave. So just notice that in your body. If you're like, oh, if it's kind of this like jolt coming through you to do the, the healing or the clearing, just notice that. And then a couple other steps, start to be aware of the energy when it happens. Excuse me. It's going to come through and you're just going to notice it. So you're getting a message, notice intuition, and then notice ego. Try to swoop right in and intercept that and talk you out of it and say, ah, there's ego. But once you notice that pattern, you can say, I hear my intuition and I don't have to doubt it because I know ego is going to come in right after. That will never go away. The Even as like a super clear channel and and someone whose intuition is really proven and tried and true, that never goes away. You just learn to differentiate. And then knowing like what feels like spirit, what feels like intuition in your body, that usually feels like it's coming down from here or it just originates here fear trauma it usually usually feel it kind of rising up 
So just be aware of that. Practice with yourself. This life is one big practice and one big whiteboard. You're you're going to leave this this recording or this live and you're going to you're going to have an example come up. So when you're like I want to be a clear channel, I want to have a stronger intuition, just notice it. Befriend it spend time with it and notice where you're in the masculine versus feminine energy. And we'll do a little bit of healing over this today of our masculine and our feminine. So we want to release the energy versus clear it or force it out. We want to use power, God's power to move it out of us versus our own human force just to get it out. I know there's a lot of successful, I'm not against this by any means, healing done with magnets, like like emotion code. I love the emotion code, but they'll use magnets. But be careful when you're working with force versus power and you're clearing you, the power, the same energy that created the body will heal the body. So when we get our, our man-made um, force in it and think that we're doing the work, that's, that's really where we, I see that we go wrong. And it's like, this energy is like giving birth. When you're, when you're clearing energy, think of a woman or if, if you've never been, if you've never given birth or you've never been around a woman who gives birth, think of animals or I don't know, ask your mom, watch a video. <laughs> Careful what videos you watch, they're not all accurate. But the most beautiful birth, you see this power overtake the woman's body, right? And she has this moment of like waves and contraction and really intense exertion and then she has peace and it's coming up in waves and this energy when you're clearing it from your body it's going to come up in waves and then right before you give birth it is going to be the most intense feeling think about like if it's a vaginal birth like ring of fire the the baby is resting there in the perineum things are getting super 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 intense that's the moment you want to quit right before it leaves your body and think about what's ideal for the birth of energy or the birth of a baby for that to naturally the woman's body to naturally push the baby out versus like a vacuum or an instrument that's pulling the baby out so think about it with energy it takes longer and we have to be more patient we have to be more allowing and we have to be more supportive for for that baby that energy to come through the body naturally versus force it or pull it out or use intervention so know this you're not alone in this clearing um this is really, really hard work. And something that, one thing I want to leave with us before we start the, the clearing and their healing, and then we can bring people on for, for some readings if they are feeling like it. Um, sorry, I'm just having some things come through. As a channel, as wanting to come to this earth and have this human experience as a channel and a really connected divine being, your veil is super thin, Just which just means you have really great spiritual sight you probably always notice that about yourself like you just kind of see things in a different light you can sometimes see the bigger picture you can feel or hear what god is speaking or the spirit is speaking to someone in their in their times of trouble that also means your body is sensitive okay and your body is sensitive because you harbor a lot of light it takes a ton of frequency to be a channel and that makes your body sensitive to things like Toxins, pathogens, chemicals, perfumes, clothes, the environment, people's energy. So just a reminder, I posted something um, that Lori Ladd posted. She had a a video that outlined this amazing. It's on my story highlights and they're sensitive. You'll have to check it out if you didn't see it. But you chose to have this thin veil. You chose to have this this clear and clean vessel. Your sensitivity is such a gift. And I am... I am beside myself after watching that video and having that experience to just remind all my friends and followers that there's nothing wrong with your body. And we don't have to numb out our bodies. We don't have to band-aid our bodies. We don't have to change our bodies. We just have to give the body what, what it needs, clear the energy, and you feel so good. Okay, enough of that. Let me know if you guys have any questions. We'll go ahead and start a little bit of a healing and a clearing. I'm going to catch these comments for a second. I needed this, getting a notebook. Awesome. I hope this was helpful. We'll post a graphic. I think I'm going to send something to my virtual assistant and she can make something really, really fancy that will outline this. Chris and Grace, Yalapa reunion. Oh, sorry. My dinner making me burp. Yes to reunion. Oh yes. Okay. So while we're on the subject, Yalapa spiritual medicine healing retreat in January, 
15th through the 20th this year. If you don't have a passport and you have like the slightest curiosity to go, just go get a passport. The retreat always sells out. So we'll be opening registration here soon. And if you know you want a spot, you just let me know. Jess, I have you down. Don't you worry. <laughs> okay, so let's start a little bit of what we all come for, this energy healing as a group. Really, really powerful. I love the stories that come in. I love hearing, I get messages when people watch the replays. They're like, like Emma, you're gonna love this. One of my best friends was watching the replay from last week when you did a reading. And I think it was your friend, I think it was Megan who had said she saw me like on a yellow dress, riding a bike and just like in all this joy in a tropical place. That really, really spoke to one of my friends and has like prompted her to go on this retreat and have this beautiful experience. So the quantum field is a apart from time and space and apart from, it's not, it's like a piece of mail that can go to all your neighbors. Like this mail is not just for you. There might be something that I say or that comes through or someone else says or a comment that resonates with you. So again, that's God speaking to God, speaking to soul, speaking to using intuition, going to the body. If it lights your body up and you're like, that kind of felt like that was for me, it is. Don't question it. Even if it was for like someone else, you're reading it or you're hearing it. There's no coincidence that you're watching this, you're listening to this. It's for you. It's totally for you. Okay. Are you guys good to start? Let me know. Just tap the hearts real quick. If you guys are in a good place to start and then we'll do a little bit of a healing and then a little bit of a reading and then we'll call it a night and we'll be back next Sunday. Awesome. All right. Find your comfortable space. I channeled this earlier for my yoga class this morning and one of the students, she said, everything that came up in my morning meditation before class, you were saying in the healing and it just like reinforced everything she was working through. So again, that intuition just comes through a divine channel and it speaks and it works. So ground yourself into your body. <clears throat> Taking three slowest, longest, deepest inhales you can find. So deep belly breath in. Expand your rib cage all the way to the top and then side out. Deep belly breath in. Exhale, let it go. If you ever wonder why we do this little grounding thing in the beginning, it's mostly for me. I have to breathe in, feel into my body, open my channel up and say, I'm not afraid to be weird. Because people heal by this energy, by this practice. Okay, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, this is both for you. Ladies, we're going to use our ovaries. If you don't have ovaries as a woman, you can still do this because you still have the energy center. So take your, your fingers both sides and then <clears throat> can't really see. Maybe you can see mine. Your ovaries are lower than you think, right? So find your belly button and go about two to three finger widths below the belly button, and then they're on both sides. So this is gonna help us clue into our masculine versus our feminine energy. This has to do with when we're allowing, when we're healing, when we're releasing. So get fingertips, one on each ovary. Fellas. You can use in your pelvis, the gentlemen in, in my class this morning, they use their pelvis. And if not, and women too, you can use your head. So this, but head is opposite. We're gonna be using the body to feel into our feminine versus our masculine energy, see where we're stronger, um, what's in balance, out of balance. Ovaries are a great place. In the body, your left side is feminine and your right side is masculine. On the head, it's the opposite. Your left side is masculine. Your right side is feminine because the energy in the head then moves through nerves, which cross in the brainstem and go to the body. So pick which where you want to use. Everyone can really use their pelvis, but for some reason, 
if that's an area that um, makes you feel really uncomfortable or you're just like again if your body holds a lot of trauma there and you know it and you have a hard time connecting you can always use the head so you can be here <laughs> or you can be here So just when I touched my head, my left brain was very, very on fire, active, because I'm, I'm teaching, I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm giving, I'm doing, versus I'm receiving. So at first, you might feel like, I'm not feeling anything. Right when you have that thought, just sink into your body a little bit deeper. Imagine your fingertips moving through energy layer into physical body. Just noticing where you feel the current of energy in your body. In a moment to listen. Okay, if you're feeling really buzzy, really active on your left ovary side, so tune into your divine feminine energy here. You're allowing, you're receiving your creativity, your sexual expression. Notice if this feels, even as I'm saying it, just use your, your fingers as tuning forks. Does it feel kind of flat? <laughs> your body just light up at these words and then come over to the right side and think of giving and doing making it happen thinking logic just how much energy is running through this part of your body and take a deep breath in you can keep your hands there after your assessment or you can let them fall down by your side. You can bring them to heart, bring them to belly. Just balancing our energies today, Father's Day, Divine Masculine. We need both energies to do our best work in the world. Depending on where we carry pain in our body or symptoms will show us where we're stronger, or maybe where we're relying on one energy more than the other. So you have like a right hip or right shoulder, right-sided pain, just think of that, that masculine side of your body, just carrying, carrying the energy, carrying the weight moving forward. Okay, so take a deep belly breath in. Sink into your body and just ask, where am I giving versus where am I receiving? Where am I allowing versus where am I forcing? Where am I in flow? Where am I in force? Start to deepen your breath. And to finish up, take a deep breath in. Imagine drawing this energy into your body from above, channeling it to the part of your body that needs the most balancing. And then exhale. Blow out of the side of your body where your energy is in excess. And you might feel like you're perfectly balanced and that's great too. Inhale, take a deep breath in. Exhale, clear it out. Inhale, deep breath in. Exhale, clear it out. Take a moment to notice any symptoms in your body. Have you been having neck pain, hip pain, shoulder pain, reproductive pain, a breakout on one side, even body odor coming from one side? 
Just notice that as a message. Just taking one last moment to receive that from your body. Trusting your intuition will show you that God will speak through your guides, reaching your higher self, using the tool of intuition to give you a knowing in your body that will land in a message in your heart or in your belly. Take a deep breath in. Sigh it out. Open your eyes. You can come back. <laughs> awesome. I love to hear what came up for you. Again, this we did, what, less than 10 minutes of this, and I know that you all got something. You felt something. You heard something. You connected to something. Let me know in the comments. Let us know as a community what came up for you, even if it's just a simple word. Um, you don't, if it's personal and if it's intimate to you, you don't necessarily have to say everything that come up, but it's amazing when, when we get in a community like this and we just start to share and heal together, people will have like the same things, similar things. And I know a lot of friendships have formed online and in person here. So, all right, keep on coming in the comments. And then if you have, Ooh, really warm and sacral. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me, Jess. That's good. This area. <laughs> we can thank Jeff from his conversations on Friday night. We would embarrass you. But yes, like that sacral, creativity, joy, expression, sexual expression, your gender's expression, both feminine and masculine, sexuality coming from this area. And a white Christmas tree with rainbow lights. I like that. Mm. My masculine was very strong, a lot about finding balance in my family life or business. I like that for you because I know in the past on one of these when we've done a reading, it was like the masculine was ready to come forward. And when that masculine energy comes forward, it's like drinking out a fire hose and sometimes it doesn't stop, but that's good. It's I think it's a little bit easier to get the masculine flow going and then give it a place. Like the masculine creates this container in our life. So imagine your, your masculine is like your day-to-day -day planner. And then your feminine is this flow and fun, flowery energy that plays within it. So I think it's easier to let the masculine ramp up and create this container. And then like kind of like almost like scheduling your feminine energy a little bit because your masculine is going to want to keep it with business and life. And then just give space. Let the masculine hold the container and give space for the feminine to be. That's really helped me. I learned that from one of my mentors. Um... I saw snowflakes in a palm tree journal and creativity. Well, I know you're coming to Jalapa and Emma, so that just <laughs> surprised me. See, interesting that you're seeing snowflakes and Jess was seeing Christmas tree. There's probably something something here. And I think you two are going to connect here on the live here in a second. I think if you want. Grace, double down on that masculine. Oh my gosh. Okay, Grace, you're going to think this is hilarious. And I think it's... Um, fitting that I've planned on talking using birth an example when you're here the first time that I did this ovary exercise it was with a pelvic floor therapist and she had me feel left or right and this was not very long ago and I was like I'm pretty sure my left side is dead like there was n no current nothing um coming from it and I had I had a really good laugh about that because I've been really working on my feminine energy and um I mean we we're all ambitious and goal-oriented Probably if you're watching this, you care about energy healing, you care about being better. And it's it's so easy to let that masculine take over and want to run our life and fix and do everything. And I really think part of, I mean, God is both masculine and feminine, right? I think in some religions, God could say he, but it's so fun to put like she or goddess on, on the name God because God is both. And we are an expression of God. And so like men and women are are in their divine masculine or their divine feminine because they're only one part of God. So I really think though for me that God expresses God's self to me most when I'm in my feminine. A lot of tension and neck shoulders feeling relief and a deep purple color. I love that. Shelly, that feels really important to write down. I don't know, in like that purple color, um, a lot of people see their guidance or the spirit or whatever is speaking to them and like it starts to come in as a color it sometimes can be an energy center clearing like Roy G. Biv your seven main run up your run up your body but that just pings me in my body for you to write that down and just like notice notice it work with it for a little bit okay Emma I'm gonna bring Jess on and then I want to 
bring you on and we can do a reading for her tonight. Does that work? It's cool with you. And if you're not in a place to, to come on, then um, no worries. I can. And you can just comment too. Hey, Jess. Hi. I was eating. Sorry. What are you eating? Triple life. <laughs> Something really healthy. Let me, okay. I invited two more people. One of them will probably deny, but it'd be really fun to have. <laughs> Four of us Hi, intuitive gals. Hi. Oh, my, my voice is like shot, so bear with me. That's all right. Ooh, um, okay. Mindy said my masculine is very strong, but with things that have been happening, have been left side over. It's been flat this morning, and now, but now flutter doing this. So Mindy was in my yoga class this morning, and that's awesome that you felt like you you feel a little bit of activation of that energy. Yes, we had. Grace, I'm naked. Can you, Grace, uh, you want to put a sheet on and join? You don't have to. I figured, I'm I'm surprised she even acknowledged that I, I brought her on. I just think her intuition is the bee's knees. When I need things, I'm always like, hey, Grace, what do you think about this? Like like last week, find yourself some intuitive girlfriends and boyfriends. They'll, they'll just do you, do you good. Okay, Jess, um, what do you, you've done this before. Do you? I have. Do you want us just to tap into your body? Do you want to ask yes, a question? Yes, tap into like, everything. Am I, I want to hear what all you have to say about me. <laughs> it's a and and when I'm going to find this man. That's what I oh, really yes. want to know. Ooh. What do you think about, okay, so I'll start. Emma, you can kind of channel in. Grace, if you get in a point of, of clothing or you can comment, I would love love your input on this. Okay. So when you said that you, what you saw, like the Christmas tree with rainbow lights? Yeah. What do you think? How do you feel like that? Like, why did that come up for you? I have no idea. It was just a picture of it. What, tell us more what it looked like. That was it. It was a white Christmas tree with like bristles and mm -hmm. whatever. And then rainbow lights at the end. Okay. That was it. And, and so... Close your eyes for a second, Jess. Okay. Okay. Let's kind of lean back. I want you to think about, bring that image back into your mind. Uh huh. Now allow yourself, I'm just gonna be a voice for a second. So allow yourself to get kind of lost in that image. Like if you were sitting there and you could see the lights, you could almost hear the Christmas music. Pay attention to what's going on in your body. Where do you feel activity in your body, Jess? Where do you guys feel it? <laughs> we'll tell you after. <laughs> Where do you feel it? Tell me one place. I'm going to push you My today. head. Your head? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Emma, do you want to say anything? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're, you don't. No pressure. We're just... Well, we're just going to team up on you tonight, Jess. Here's what, okay, head very busy. I feel that energy wanting to come to your sacral, though. Okay. So, like, and that, and because we've, this is something that, you know, we've worked on and we've been working through, so the desire for a partner, it can be very, like, it can be very masculine driven, right? Like, we got to yeah. figure it out. We got to, like, when is this, like, logic locked? Is this the person? Is this going to make sense? Is this the place when that energy, it's, it's at your head, but your whole your body's just like pulling it down to your sacral. Yeah, yeah. In your creativity, in your expression, in your joy, that's where it unfolds. I think it's interesting the Christmas tree came up because I know in the, one of the readings I've done for you, I've seen you on a couch, Christmas time, winter, snow falling with this. Yes, tree. yes. So sometimes when those things come through. And my tree is white, it has snow on it, and rainbow light. <laughs> When these, um, when these things come through for like me in a meditation, if, if something's on my heart and I get a little signal, I just take it as like the universe being like, Hey kid, keep your head up. You know, like yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I, I hear your prayers. I see you. Yeah. Okay. Emma? So I went back and was tapping into the snowflakes that I saw. There was a lot of like deep blue surrounding that. 
which generally doesn't deep blue signify like sadness and grief. So maybe there's some like sadness and grief that needs to be removed still. I'm feeling like maybe something that's super old. Hmm. Okay. And that just came in like um, this second, but I was seeing a lot of orange. Um, but then when you said, Jen, what part of your body, my heart and solar plexus lit up for her. So maybe it's moving through all of those energy centers. Um, but I got this feeling of like, I think it's called White Christmas, the movie. Yeah, oh, no, it's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful, life. it's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life. life. It's a great. great <laughs> yes, show. they're both good. Movie. But it's like that feeling. It reminded me of like that coming home feeling, like that comforting. Yeah. yeah. That's how I felt when I thought of the snowflakes, too. So I'm not sure. Could this signify a time of year, too, that something's going to happen? I don't know. Emma, do you see me of the guy in Yalapa is the question. What? Sorry. Do you see me of the guy in Yalapa is the question. Jess is probably coming in January. Emma will be there. We all know it. Yeah, I know, but I am really concerned about this. I, if I don't have a boyfriend, then I'm not coming. Jeff will, Jeff will be your, your fill-in. No, um, no, he won't. Fill boy. No. We'll discuss those details. Okay. What? Anything else, Jess? We can bring... No, I mean, that Brockton commented against my daughter. I think he's pissed at me. It's my ex-husband. And, um... That, I'm just, like, kind of live and learn. I'm not really, it is what it is. It's in the past. I'm not really going to let it suck me down of my energy. What you said, Emma, about the past, about the old feelings, I did have a dream of my dad last night, and I haven't mm -hmm. talked to him in a long time. And I feel like that was probably, I don't know why it's coming up again, but I did think about that last night, so I was wondering what that was. That could be what it has to signify. Even a memory from childhood, maybe like a like I was feeling a lot of masculine energy too, like around my dad. With that, like the feeling that I had with my dad when I was young, maybe. So maybe yeah. it does have something to do with that. That is wanting to come up and be addressed and cleared. I didn't think about Father's Day there. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Chen. <laughs> I think that unless anyone else wants to come on, we can make it. That was pretty good, though. That was kind of long. Short. I was going to say short and sweet. Short. And honestly. Sweet. I don't want to get those off. You're stuck on. <laughs> we'll end the video here in a second. Um, We'll be back next next Sunday. So what I want to encourage our community is so when you're when you're going through your week and you have a question about energy or there's something that like feels stuck in your body or like you're trying to work through, bring it here. You don't have to necessarily come on camera. You can put it in the comments. I'm always happy to do a reading for you. Emma, she always gets thrown into something. Um, I want to bring Grace on sometime and we'll help you tap into the intuition, tap into what's already yours and my biggest heart for this community is one, we have a lot of those who are healing chronic illness and to realize that your body sensitivities are a gift. And number two, that everyone's intuitive. Everyone has these gifts. And when you can access these gifts and use them in your life, your whole life will change. I promise. So we'll be back next Sunday. Bring whatever you need. We'll be here for group healing questions and teaching. And then this will be posted on YouTube. If you want to catch the replay, I'll see you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.